Indian motorcycles. It's a 21 Chieftain. This is a 23. It's amazing. It's lightweight, super agile. Sport mode was insane. I think we know the winner, dude. Yo, what's up Crooks Moto Crew? So today, very special day. We are at Indian Motorcycles here in Meridian, Idaho, and we are going to test ride some bikes. Josh, you want to tell them while we're test riding? We are riding a Chieftain Limited 2021 and a 23 Challenger Dark Horse. Yeah. Shout out to Hunter for making this happen here at Indian Motorcycles. We've never rode an Indian so far, so this is going to be super exciting. Yeah, I don't know what to expect. We'll find out. We're gonna start by a test ride, and then we're gonna go over the bikes, do a little comparison of the two, give you our thoughts of riding an Indian for the first time ever. We're Harley guys. Let's see what these Indians are about, dude. Let's get this vlog freaking started. Let's go. current model uh, Chieftain Limited. To start it, you use your ignition. Just tap that because the key fob is nearby so it'll run the starter. Ooh, that sounds good. It's got some pipe. Oh, yeah. Cruise control, you tap it in. Orange icon appears means it's ready. If you tap it in towards the bike, towards the center of the bike, a green icon will appear, meaning it's active. You can tap the brakes or roll forward on the throttle, and that will cut the cruise control off. This is for your windscreen control. <laughs> or if you get off the highway and you know you're gonna be going slowly, you just double tap it, and it'll go all the way down without further touching it. So cool. High beams, flash to pass, horn. <laughs> Left, right, cancel. So for you Harley guys, you're gonna have to get used to that. Yeah, yeah it's a little different. Uh, your music here. Yeah. And then we've got your GPS button here. I call it the duck bill because it kind of resembles that. And you can uh, zoom out on your map with this button. Also, there's a lot of information on your dash here that easily is accessible while your hand is on the bars. You just pull this trigger here and it goes between the information that you have. Tire pressure monitoring system, compass, miles per gallon, battery readout. Pull this down and that's how you choose your modes. Tour for those longer trips, it's gonna limit how quickly your throttle bodies open up so it's a nice easy ride so you can ride longer without getting fatigued. Standard is what you're usually gonna be in. And then sport is gonna be if you guys are running up to Idaho City and you're in the twisties, you're gonna be having fun. Sport okay. mode's where it's at. Automatic locking bags. If you want to secure your items, you just tap up and that will lock your bags. Okay. And then when you come up to the bike, you can just hit it and then open it. It's good to go. Same applies for this bike here. It's just instead of the storage being here on the Challenger, it's down here, fixed fairing, so you have a little bit more space. It's a 21 Chieftain. This is a 23. 23. But they're both current models. They haven't really changed much in between these two years. So okay. that was a 116. Okay. Um, the, the really, the, the, the phrase we use in the industry is bold new graphics. Yeah. Same bike, new color, you know. Yeah. We're gonna rip these guys around, grab some lunch. We just have like a loop planned. And you guys will have it back today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Dude, sweet. Yeah, I think you guys are gonna have fun. Indians are pretty sick, man. Super smooth.
What's up, Crooks Moto Crew? And we are riding some Indians. Dude, first time that Crooks Moto Crew has ever been on an Indian, so that's crazy. Ooh. Shout out to Indian for letting us do this. Chieftain versus Challenger. We have a 2021 and a 2023. Uh, the dark horse, you know, trim style, and then the limited trim style. So gloss flake, chrome, matte black, blacked out engine. Some have some modifications. The Chieftain has taller bars on it, has a pipe on it. The Challenger is pretty much bone stock from what I can see. Yeah, we're gonna go ride these bikes. Stop for lunch. We're riding out the Emmett. We're doing a loop. They gave us all day on these bikes. So it's gonna be lots of information, lots of ride time. You guys come along for the ride. All right, Kirk's Moto Crew, let's go. Let's get it going. Woo, Indians. Super stoked we're gonna eat a cheeseburger and some jalapeno teasers and then get back to this test ride, dude. Don't forget the cherry scotch and soda. The cherry scotch and soda, you have to. But yeah, we're gonna get back uh, on the road, get the test ride continued and uh, swap bikes. And uh, yeah, continue on ripping, dude. These things are awesome. First impression so far. It's amazing. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's light, it feels light which is really crazy. I'm on this big bagger and it almost feels like my diamond as far as like when I'm sitting on it, like I don't feel like my bike's heavy and trying to fall over. It's kind of crazy like that. Yeah, I would say the same thing, dude. Super smooth. We haven't put it in sport mode yet. We've done touring mode and just normal standard mode. Didn't really, you didn't notice much of a difference between those two. So far, first impressions are awesome. Yeah, ergonomics and rideability is really, really nice. Definitely missing the sound. It's weird, I just got on this bike. It's a, it's a brand I've never ridden. It's a size bike I've never, I mean, I've ridden other baggers and stuff before. Cornering on this thing, instantly comfortable. Like, I've ridden it forever. It's kind of crazy, like, I'm doing, I'm doing some better cornering on this than I am on my own bike that is set up for me that I ride every day. Something about just the maneuverability of this bike, it just seems like it, it's just so easy to control. It's effortless. Effort. It's really effortless, which is, it's very interesting. I mean, there's an aspect to it that I'm still missing that, that Harley shake, that Harley kind of just feedback that you get with the bike a little more. But yeah, these bikes are awesome. More to come. All right, just got the food. Mm. First thoughts, how's oh, the God. teasers? Really good. Yeah, they're so good. All right, what's up Crooks Moto Crew? Okay, so first fuel stop with the Indian. Just had a scenario where maybe we couldn't even open, was trying to figure out how to open the gas, the gas cap. On his, the Chieftain the 21, it has a normal gas cap. Screw off guy. Yeah, on the Challenger though, it's got this pop guy. So we were trying to figure out how to open it. We were turning it on. We were going through the settings. We're trying to push it, trying to push this lock forward. Nothing was happening. And then we had to look it up, but the tank unlock is actually right down here. So you don't really notice it from here until you get down further back or you already know it's there. So that's been one, one thing so far that was like a gotcha. Yeah. Like trying to figure that out. So now we're gonna fuel up and we're gonna get back on the road. dude so 2021 chieftain limited give it to me straight first time riding an indian first time riding this bike well uh man it's been a joy it's been a treat i'm happy with basically every factor on this bike it is smooth it's lightweight super agile and maneuverable like in the perfect way not so much that it's too much not so much as just a little more it's like in a sweet spot that it's kind of hard to explain the bike is the windscreen going up and down is a blessing, but I just tend to just ride it all the way up because I don't ever want wind on my face. But I suppose if I did on a hot summer day, maybe I would roll it down. Love the look. I mean, what a beauty. Now this bike has, I don't know what they call it in Indian, but it's like a stage one. So it's got like an aftermarket intake, aftermarket exhaust. So it's got a good sound. Sport mode was kind of crazy. It was fast, way, way more than I need. <laughs> I was good. Honestly, in the lowest mode, what had still had more power than I needed to be yeah. make anything happen. Touring mode was great, even through town. Everything was just linear and easy. Thoughts on like the bags, the storage compartment. Bags are great. You can lock them with the remote. 
You can lock them push button here, or you can manually lock them with the key on top. That's three locking options for those. So you can literally like, oh, I forgot to lock my bags because I have maybe camera equipment or you know my wallet or something in there. And remember last second and just grab your key fob out of your pocket or off your belt or wherever you keep it. Click it. So that is a great option. They're plenty big. Front part compartments on this guy, it's just a little dude on top. This is a little slot. It's got a cord for plugging in up here, USB-C, or uh, sorry, USB-A, and then a little slot. I can fit my GoPro in there, so can like- Can fit your phone? Can I fit my phone? Let's That's right. always the question. Yeah, I got a big phone with a wallet on the back. Can you pick it up? Can you fit the big phone? Mm, yes, big phone fits in. Just right. barely, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it out of there right now. <laughs> Hmm. I'll have to work on that later. <laughs> I'm gonna get that guy out of there. Yeah, I mean, so far so good. So Speakers are pl plenty loud riding around. I've been rocking them and through our comm system. Uh, Jay Crooks can hear it through his. So he's been rocking too to the same music. The limited styling, the trim package, how it looks. Oh, it looks great. I mean, you can see here, there's a like a rainbow flake on this against this black and chrome. Absolutely stunning. Like this thing glistens, look at it. It's just covered in chrome and even all up into here. It is the limited. I don't know if the lower models are just like a, a plastic here or whatever, but on this limited, that flake goes all the way up, all the way up to the edge of your screen, which is amazing. Around your bezels, which are also then chrome, then this, I mean like this limited package really comes with everything. Even that, even that color comes all the way into the Indian uh, insignia that's in on the speaker. Like it's, it's good to go, man. Chrome mirrors. Now there, I don't know if these are. Oh yeah, these are stock mirrors. Yep, these look like stock Indian mirrors. They got the Indian logo on them. How's the hand controls? Hand control. Stock location of like you know where the levers are, hand controls, just operating them. They are great, but I don't have like a lot of control on my bike because it's not like a bagger with. It just has the standard Harley start stop uh, blinkers, hazards, that kind of thing. But this is something that is easy enough to get on a bike and figure out these controls. Oh yeah, definitely. And that's what I'm saying. Like I don't have any other like it's not like, oh, I'm used to my bat my other bagger. It is what it is. It, it was intuitive. The blinkers are right here on your left hand. The volume control here, oh, menu navigation here. These are all lights and horn. There's a trigger up here for going through some screens, a little uh and then on this side is your cruise control and your your screen up and down, and then you're starting to stop on your bike, and there's another trigger over here. Yeah. Clutch feels good. Brakes are great. Yeah. The thing stops w at ease. And another thing I was noticing is on, I think my suspension in my front on my bike is stock. I get a lot of nose dive if I pull on my front brake on my Harley a lot. I've been pulling on this guy. My The bike seems to stay pretty freaking planted and, and even, even if I'm not rear braking at all and it's all front brake. So that has been something that has been kind of a treat. Now, mind you, I think these are upgrade bars as far as, cause they have a little rise to them. And I think it's the stock seat, but the floorboards seem to me to be a little further forward than the Harleys. I'm not super, I can't be for sure on that. I mean, I'm at like, if I've sat all the way back, just like cruise mode, my arms are like at the perfect distance. Fits me really good. This thing is an absolute dream to ride. Yeah, I'm actually kind of a little torn on this bike because the look of the fairing style isn't my favorite. I really like the Challenger or say the Road Glide fixed fairing style much more than I like this fairing style. But as far as, I haven't rode the other one yet, but as far as the feel of this one, I'm in love. All right, dude. Yeah, it's, it's a 10 out of 10 and a Josh Green thumbs up. Hell yeah. So you just rode the 2023 Challenger Dark Horse. Tell us about it. Challenger Dark Horse is sick. The Indian is definitely different than the Harley, for sure sound, the vibe, the kind of clunkiness. There's a lot more clunkiness on a Harley. The way you shift, uh, just maneuvering, shifting through gears feels more clunky. And I kind of like that, it has more feedback. But this is just insanely smooth uh, between the transitions of shifting, just cornering in general, and uh, all that. Floorboards are definitely a lot more forward, bigger, larger. Those felt really nice. The bags. Super big. The bags are like, I would say, I'm not sure if in terms of the actual leaders, they are bigger than the Harleys, but they seem like they're bigger, just like appearance wise and kind of bulkness. These are probably similar more towards the CVO bags, which are bigger than the like 22, for instance. Uh, the seat is insanely comfy. 
This thing is just like, oh my gosh, there's so much cush to this. I bet after, you know, over time, it probably wears in just because it is all super cushy now. So who knows how la long that lasts up. The ride modes, uh, the sport mode was insane. I literally was taking my first right turn in sport mode and like, was like, oh, holy cow. This is insane. Cause I just pulled on the throttle as I expected and it ripped off the line. I yeah, had to like immediately break because I was about to go into the other lane. Yeah, definitely both of us came out of our, it was a sharp right hand turn just to get from a side road into the main road. Onto a freeway. We both, highway. We both went in like to the other lane. Yeah. There was nobody there or anything. It was crazy, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, this bike just seems, it's super planted, super smooth. There's a vibe difference between this bike. I feel like this just has, switching between the ride modes was super easy. Just smacking this middle button here and then literally you just hit it and you can hit the ride mode and it switches. My favorite feature on this bike is the mechanical windshield. This is so sick. And just to be able to bring it up and down. When I'm in the city, I have my visor up and my glasses on and I want some wind in my face because I like that feeling in the city. Now, as soon as I get on the highway though, I don't want it because it's too much. So being able to raise that thing up, so cool. Uh, storage is good. You know, these little click guys, they're definitely smaller than um, uh, the Rogue Glide. And even the standard, the Rogue Glide ST or the normal standard Rogue Glides prior to 2024, uh, they still seem maybe a little smaller. These are just a little deep, but they're less slanted. The Harley ones are more deep, like downward. So you can kind of throw stuff in there and it doesn't feel like it's gonna slide out. This is a little more sketchy because it feels like you could hit a bump and it could bounce out if you had it open before you could get it closed. But overall, I mean, these lock, which is cool, having the gas tank open button right here. That was, it took me a second to learn, as you guys saw. Oh yeah. Damn. It's very small, it's just tucked away there, which is, you know, I guess kind of nice if somebody was, you know, messing around with your bike or something. Both of the bikes have little plugs right here, which I'm assuming is for heated gear. You know, you could probably change this out for maybe like a USB port or something. This bike is awesome. I thought I was more of a fan of the dark horse color scheme, but I am not. After seeing this in person, I think it looks really good. If you like a blacked out engine, if you like matte colors, you're gonna love it. I like chrome. I want chrome, I want gloss black, I want sparkle. I would 100% go with the limited. Pos positioning's good, dude. I mean, one thing about this bike I've noticed is that from taking off, I can like immediately get to speed and just feel very confident the whole time, which is really nice. The ergonomics on this bike are really nice. On my Harley, I can get more like mid position because these floorboards are uh, definitely further forward on the Indian for sure. So that's one thing I like to, you know, kind of rock like this in a mid kind of position and can't do that as much just because I'm kind of already hanging off, I'm starting to hit the exhaust. But the location here is nice. I mean, for touring, being able to have your feet right here, I think is awesome. It took me some getting used to, to, to be braking and shifting up here though. Like there's been a few times I went to get the brake and was like, whoa, why is it way up? Like way up there. I wasn't used to how far up there it was compared to my road glide. And yeah, bars, stock bar location. I mean, these are just stock. I don't like how low they are, but I will say I, I've i hopped on this bike and immediately like within maybe five minutes, I felt pretty comfortable taking slow speed maneuvers and turning around and stuff like that. So yeah, and I mean, I could go, I could tour on this. You know, I wouldn't have as much fun because I like to be up here and I like to have a little more aggressive stance, but this bike's awesome. I'm excited to ride the Chieftain now and yeah, get a vibe of how that feels. Let's get freaking swapped and put some more miles on these baddies. Hit some curves. All right, see.
All right, officially done with the test ride of the 2023 yes, sir. Challenger Dark Horse. Dude, first initial thoughts of the bike. Not the biggest fan. All right, why? Things that can be changed, but as it sits, which I think is stock stuff, the bars are bad. Like they're, the back sweep has my arms like this. They're really low. Match that with the seat. When I'm sitting in this, my whole crotch sits on the tank. Like there's not enough room for my body in here. Yeah. Versus the other one, Chieftain, I had inches before the end of the seat. So I was just very, and it, and it sits higher on the seat. So with the lower bars, higher sitting on the seat and being crunched in there, I honestly felt like I was on a sport bike. Kind of crazy, very unexpected. Other than that, I mean. Suspension, how'd suspension feel? Oh, I mean, as far as cornering, power, suspension, I mean, it's, it's great. But as far as my overall riding experience, did not have a good time. I was very uncomfortable. Couldn't wait to get off it. And the Chieftain for me, I was hoping that you hated it and wanted to just trade me back. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, that's not what we're out here doing. We're riding, we're getting the full experience. Your main gripes are seat, kind of the location of where you were on the bike to the tank, and then obviously the bars on this. And then what would you say about the fairing? In terms uh, of just kind of the fairing, the fixed fairing versus the fork mounted fairing. I definitely like like the storage pockets are nicer to have a little more storage because there's almost none on that besides that little top sleeve. Gauge clusters are in a great spot because they are, so infotainment's here, but the, the actual physical gauge cluster is higher up. Yeah. And that is right below the windshield. So it's just a peep down. It's like basically right in the same spot as if you were to do a T-bar on a Dyna, it would be like in that kind of like field of view. Windshield on this guy at low is almost like that one up. So the windshield on this guy, when it's high, it's, I can't feel any wind on my head. So that was, that's pretty cool. Cause you can actually have that all the way up go visor up on your helmet and be able to get some air in your, on your face, but not necessarily have buffeting on your head. No, no glasses on, felt nothing, no wind on my eyes. So that was really nice. So there's like a really cool balance you can play with there as far as how much comes in. Nice dude, so overall you got a rating, you got a number that you'd give her? I'd have to go like a six. So I was so uncomfortable on this thing that I just know I could rate it better. Like I couldn't wait to get off it. I can't give something a higher rating. All handling is great. Power delivery is great. Infotainment's great, all of that. And then I'm docking you a couple for the for the uncomfortability. Now that is what I believe is stock stuff and who leaves stock seats and bars on their bike, you know? Yeah. I would really truly love to be able to put the right bars on this, put a seat that works, get this thing dialed into me and then give it a true rating. But as far as stock goes, that's where I'm at with it. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely choosing chal uh, choosing uh, Chieftain over Challenger. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at with it. You heard the man. All right. I'll give it a Josh Green. Thumbs slightly cocked this way, but still up because I do like the bike. Yo, what's up guys? All right, so just got it done test riding the Chieftain. I rode the Challenger first. First impressions of the Chieftain. I instantly felt like I felt the road more. I, it felt like as soon as I started ripping on it, I felt like the engine was making more noise, more feedback. It felt more connected to the road. Like there was more of the rumble and a little bit more of the like, this feels like a motorcycle. This one is so smooth that it doesn't feel like motorcycles that I'm used to coming from a heart like all Harleys. And being that this is the first time I've been on a bike like this, at least an Indian, um, it, dude, it was awesome. The bar location on this was so much better because it was straight. It was almost like right at shoulder length, which is where I like it. But I was telling Josh just a minute ago after getting on this bike and riding from where we came all the way back here, I didn't want to get off this bike, even like to ride home. <laughs> Something about this bike, it's got a pipe on it, it sounds good. Intake, sport mode on this thing was crazy. It felt like it was about to just lift up the front end almost. The loads of power, we were like taking curbs so fast and just locked in and it just felt sturdy, dude. I was taking some corners one-handed and it just felt like, dude, once you lock it in, it's just crazy. Comparatively to this bike versus this bike, you're in the cockpit more on this bike, 100%. You feel like you're in in more of in the like motorcycle, not on top of it. Like Josh, the location, like how far the seat is and where the tank starts kind of starting is definitely better. There's more room in front. I mean, most of it for the most part is the same. Obviously this one's got a stage one. 
So this one's definitely got a little more pep in it, sounds better, you get more feedback in the ear. The windshield, definitely too low for me, stock being like 6'1". I had it all the way up the whole entire time when I was getting hit, you know, getting wind on my head right here. And in some of the crazy corners, going fast, get kind of a lot of dis disruptive wind. And so I had a little bit of kind of head shake, that kind of messed with me a bit. Switch out for a taller windscreen, bring bring the bars in a little bit. I probably do probably stick with the same height. Suspension super good. Like, dude, I don't know if this is just like how it comes stock. I'm assuming it's all stock, but the suspension on this thing is awesome. It stops well, it corners insanely good. Uh, there's a little bit of that kind of like stock suspension bob here and there, I felt in certain situations, but um, yeah, an incredible bike. I'm super stoked. This one is for sure the winner. I would give this literally probably, I don't know, maybe a 10, dude. Like, yeah, it was the same. I'd give this thing like a 10, dude. Like this thing, comparison to this bike, like I would choose this bike 100%. Just because it rode awesome and off the gate, this thing's fun. I think we know the winner, dude. I mean, at least for us too, coming from Harleys, riding Dinas, Sporties, Baggers, I think, I think Indian did this bike 100% justice, this thing feels amazing. Like you said, kitted out the Challenger, it probably could get you there too, but. All right guys, that was the ride. Uh, thanks a lot for coming along with us. Um, we have some uh, difference of opinions you guys might have in the, in the comments section. Yeah, are you Chieftain or are you Challenger? Which one? I mean, I know at this point I am a Chieftain person now. I officially know that. It's been fun to ride an Indian for the first time. Definitely. That was, uh, that was a wonderful experience. We're super interested to hear what your guys' feedback is. Obviously, we have only rode Harleys on this channel since day one. Yep. This is the first Indian that's ever been on the channel. So let us know if you want to see more Indian stuff, uh, if you're interested in that, if you want uh, any ideas or comparisons, maybe we can do more comparisons between the two, or yeah, or just get another chance to highlight some more motorcycles that are out there in the world uh, and in our local community and bikes that you guys may be riding yourself. So yeah, be sure to drop a like uh, if you liked the video today, be sure to drop a comment. Like I said, if you got anything to say about these two bikes, are you guys a Harley guy or an Indian guy? Let us know in the comments and definitely subscribe. Help support us, keep this dream alive and keep the channel going. And be sure to check out our website, crooksmoto.com. Uh, for some merch. If you guys uh, are a supporter of the channel and want to support a little little further, um, be sure to check out crooksmoto.com and our bonus content on Patreon as well, our After Hours video series. I had fun. I, yeah, I had such a great time. This was so good. The Indians just ride different, dude. It's just a different ride. It's 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 not the same. It's it's a different ride. It's got its ups and its downs compared to other things out there, but I think so. I say overall, in general, average good time meter was on a high. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent We had so much fun. Glad you guys came along for the trip. Thanks for making it to this part of the video. And a uh, big shout out to Hunter at Indian here in Meridian, Idaho, and everybody else maybe behind the scenes that helped put this together. We're excited to, um, yeah, just highlight more stuff in the Treasure Valley community, more motorcycles, more content for you guys. Bridge this community here in, in our area and our internet community too. I think that's it, man. Yeah. Let's get the hell out of here, dude. I'm All ready right. for some dinner. Yeah, I'm ready to go, dude. Right, dude, love you guys. All right, peace.